chapter 2, book of Titus, Timothy instructing his young son to set up the ministration in the church. He teaches the young man of God some principles that I think is very befitting for us. Second, I mean, chapter 2, verse 11. You have it, say amen. It says, For the grace of God has been revealed, bringing salvation to all people. And we are instructed to turn from godless living and sinful pleasures. We should live in this evil world with wisdom righteousness and devotion to God that's some good reading right there while we look forward see that's hope right there with hope anybody got any hope tonight to what to, to that wonderful day when the glory of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ will be revealed he gave his life to free us from every kind of sin listen to that y'all you and I don't have to be dominated by sin. The Bible just read to us, he gave his life to free you and I from every kind of sin. So get telling yourself you can't. If that case, then God just lied to us. That simple. Mm. Let me get my place. It says, uh, he gave us to he gave his life to free us from every kind of sin to cleanse us and to make us his very own people totally committed to doing good deeds you must teach these things and encourage the believers to do them you have the authority to correct them when necessary so don't let anyone disregard what you say father we thank you oh lord we thank you lord stir this word up let it fall on good soil in the hearts of the people, Father God. Father God, we honor you tonight. It's a privilege. Father God, I know the people of God, Father God, is battling and waging war internally, externally, spiritually, and naturally. I sense it by the Spirit, and I know it, Father God, to be true. So, Father God, I thank you that you are getting ready to encourage and yet cut away. Help us to examine, Father God, what we are causing. <laughs> oh, my God, in our life, Father God, give us the strength. To have wisdom to recognize, Father God, how to throw off and put to death the deeds of the flesh that will cause us problems, Father God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Come on and say amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. As I told you last week, grace is defined as the undeserved love and favor of God toward the fallen man. I was sitting here consecrating all day and... It was just pretty much me and Mahogany in the building today. I think Jakar was upstairs and so forth. But when I began to, 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 to re-examine my God and look at uh, my introduction, when I thought about the undeserved love and favor God, and I leaned back in my chair at my desk, my God, and I began to think about what I was and where I'm at today and how God's, my God, love and favor has, has been found faithful and true in my life i want you to know this tonight my god that the word of god is true the word of god every promise is, is yea and amen i'm telling you my god oh my god god is not a god that he shall lie church and those that's looking online my god undeserved love it did not have to turn out like this in your life you may be dealing with some things like everybody else but if you look at it and count up the cost it did not have to turn out like it has turned out for you. It could be extremely worse than what it is. And so in the concordance, my God, let's go a little deeper. It says the, the, the grace is the, the divine influence, ooh, divine influence uh, upon the heart. And its reflection in a person's life. So when grace is operating and grace, my God, is moving in a life, my God, that has truly, truly been born again, it would have a divine influence and it would begin to show itself in a person's life. Are you with me so far? And then we would see, my God, the outward reflection of what was done inwardly. Are you with me so far? So grace shows up, my God, internal, but it also manifests itself 
external. Do I got a witness out there so far? And so we must understand, my God, that grace has also the definition to empower you. God will not ask you and I, my God, to overcome something if he didn't give us the power to be able to do it. He will be considered an unjust God. The Bible says he gave his life so that, my God, we can be free from all types of sin. So that right there, my God, who, my God, leaves, uh, uh, alleviates you and I from talking about I can't. I ain't strong enough. Ain't nobody going to help me. God already helped you when he said it is finished over 2,000 years ago. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. And so you have the power if you are truly born again. My God, and your spirit is alive and you are properly spending time flipping them pages. That means reading your Bible. If you are sp properly spending time, my God, not just reading, but really trying to apply what you are reading in your life. My God, and you mixing that, my God, study with prayer. I promise you there's be some things that will begin to just fall off of your life. You'll wake up one morning like I did 20 plus years ago and don't have another desire to smoke a cigarette. Ain't smoked one since 1997. My God, are y'all with me so far? And so therefore, so therefore, the grace will empower you to do what you cannot humanly do in your own strength. Are y'all with me so far? Come on, y'all talk to him. Let's give God a hand right quick. Let's give God a hand. And so I titled this sermon, Lifestyle Still Matters, because in this day and time that we're living in, oh, my God, we have taken this one word I'm talking about, about grace, my God, and we have used it, my God, as a license to continually practice. Watch my verbiage tonight. Please pay attention, wake up, move all the distractions, because our devil will cause you to miss something that you need that's going to empower your life for your next season. We in the body of Christ as professing, professing Christians in this church and everywhere else, my God, and online has taken this one word, grace, and used as a license to practice things that God said you and I have the dominion over. Practice simple behaviors when you and I have the power, oh my God, to overcome those behaviors. You can't tell God, my God, that you can't do it. So what you're telling God is that your sacrifice over 2,000 years ago was not enough for me. My God, your blood ain't strong enough, my God. Your spirit ain't powerful enough for me to stop doing what my flesh want to do. I can't quit having sex. I can't quit smoking dope. I can't quit whatever it is that you're doing. You're telling God, my God, when you and I do not stop, when you and I, I and you do not stop doing stuff that we know that God don't approve of, we're telling God that your sacrifice was not enough over 2,000 years ago and that is blasphemous and if you read your Bible it, it would prove to you that God's sacrifice was more than enough lifestyle still matters look at your name and say lifestyle still matters and so I talked to you on point one last week. My God, I'm just going to give you the, my God, you can go online and look at it. Grace saves you. Uh, my God, no one is saved apart from grace. Without the shedding of the blood, there would not be any forgiveness of sin. Grace saves you, but grace also empowers you to do what you and I cannot do. It takes God's grace, Shemaine, for me to be able to do, do what I'm doing today. See, I'm trying to say it takes grace, God's grace to empower me. The Bible says when Peter then preached the gospel, oh my God, in the book of Acts, the Bible said the Spirit of the Lord came upon them in power, and they preached with a boldness. Grace empowers you. Oh, my God, grace gives you power. That dudamous power gives you internal strength. It gives you internal tenacity. It gives you internal passion. Oh, my God, when you're full of grace, my God, you walk different, talk different, feel different. Oh, my God, when you start conquering things, my God, when you look back and realize I don't do the things I used to do, I don't look like I used to look, my self-esteem has went up, my self-confidence went up, my God. All that comes because God's grace. It's operated in your life. My God, we take God's grace for granted. Oh, my God, grace is powerful, man. Without it, my God, we will be doomed for destruction. Boy, I'm trying to help you understand. You need God's grace. It was God's grace and mercy that made you get wake, wake you up this morning. It was God's grace and mercy that brought you to church tonight. It was God's grace that kept you. Some of us would have been and lost our mind by now if it wasn't for the grace and mercy of God. Some of us would have been and quit on God if it wasn't for the grace and mercy of God. Ooh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Mm. Let me stir y'all up. So, my God, grace saves us with the mixture of shedding of the blood and faith and belief. Because as I taught y'all, you can't say you believe if you ain't got no faith. Faith and belief go hand in hand. If I say I believe in God, then I got to have faith in God, right? The Bible says you must believe, Krista, that he is a reward of those that diligent. Seeking. Do you believe? Do anybody believe tonight other than me? Okay, I'm talking to the right crowd. Look at your neighbor again and say, Lifestyle still matters. 
And so there's another side to grace that I want to attempt to try to teach us with tonight. So point number two, grace schools. Watch this. You and I, it schools us. Grace teaches us uh, the negative side of Christian living and what to avoid. Let me give you the negative side of this. So as I stated earlier, if we are born again Christians and we are steady operating and functioning from the first Adam, then we are not allowing grace to empower us. Are y'all with me so far? Okay, uh, I'm going to teach you this is heavy. There, cause there, because see, when we, when we don't cross over and begin to operate in the new nature, we don't begin to see ourselves as the new creation. Come on, somebody. Oh, my God. We continue to say we say, but we still see ourselves as the old man. See, we still deal with the old problems. We still got the same old mindsets. We still hang around the same old people. We still listen to the same old music. We still making the same old excuses. That means we are dealing with the first man, Adam. That's sin in the garden. We're not following, we're not following after the second Adam, which is Jesus Christ. My God. So here is a negative side. My God, when we don't allow grace to empower us. Watch this. Write this down. Grace, my God, will teach you and I about ungodliness. Watch this. Write that down. Anything that does not. This is Bible. I'm going to give you a lot of scripture tonight. I'm going to teach you. So don't look for no excitement. Look to write. My God, anything that does not glorify God is considered ungodly. Anything. So if you write down ungodly, you probably can write five things right now that you're doing in your life that you, that you know that's, go, that's not godly. Those things right there, my God, grace has given you the power to overcome. Grace has given you the power to stop. Right there. I'm going to teach you tonight, so get ready, my God. 1 Corinthians 10, 31, you can write this down. So whatever, my God, you eat, so whether you eat or drink, or whatever you do, do all for the glory of God. So when you leave the presence of the saints tonight, whatever you and I go, you got to ask yourself, this what I'm getting ready to do, uh, this place that I'm getting ready to go, this thing that I'm thinking about, is it going to glorify God? If people knew I was doing it, if people knew I was on my way over there, my God, what would they think? What would they say, my God, if they knew I was getting ready to do what I'm getting ready to do, I go where I was getting ready to go. Come on, y'all with me so far. Come on, I'm going to teach you tonight. I'm going to teach you tonight. And so you got to think about what the scriptures say. My God, whether we eat or drink. Don't you know that uh, the Bible says to bring context that if, if it's a young brother, a young sister that's going out to eat with you and I, and they feel like that I should not eat a certain type of food, a certain type of meat. And Paul say, my God, for me not to eat that for the sake of his conscience, even though I know that it's okay. But so I don't ruin this young believer's conscience, my God, or his, his belief system about me and God. Paul says for me, my God, not to eat it. That's love. So well, you, know what, you know what ungodly should do? Man, you can tripping. You can't tell me what I can eat. I can eat what I want to eat. That's what flesh would tell you to do. But Paul says, my God, that you and I, whether we eat whatever we eat, my God, it should not bring shame to God. It should not hurt nobody's conscience. It should not offend nobody, my God. Because, my God, that was going on in the Bible times and it's still going on today. But whatever you do, you got to ask yourself, is this going to offend? Is this going to hurt? Or is this a stumbling block to my sister and brother that's watching me? If we go ahead and do something that we know, my God, that may hurt somebody, we are not operating in love. If we go on and talk about something, I say something about somebody that we know might not be true, and we spread it, we didn't operate in love. That's a form of ungodliness. We're not allowing grace to empower us. And so, say, for instance, you hear something. You hear something, and it's a rumor. Grace will tell you, don't you say nothing. Even though you have a gospel spirit, grace will come in and say, don't you say nothing, because you don't know if that's true. That's why the Bible says, heart not your heart to the voice of God. God is always speaking, my God. We just drown him out. Yeah. Well, that's my friend. She ain't gonna, so what we do, uh, Sharon, don't you tell nobody. Promise me you ain't going to tell nobody. Well, if Pastor found out, they going to be. See, you're already out of order. Yeah. Look at your neighbor and say, lifestyle still matters. Yeah. Write this down, worldly lust. This is what I'm finna get good at. James 4 and 4 says, you are, I mean, you are adulterers. Don't you realize that friendship with the world makes you an enemy of God? He said, I say it again. If you want to be a friend, book of James, of the world, you make yourself an enemy of God. First John 2 and 15 says, do not love this world nor the things it offers you. For when you love the world, you do not love 
You do not have the love of the Father in you. So that's three times in 1 John 2.15 where the word love is mentioned. Do not love this world. When you love the world, you do not have the love of God in you. We got to be careful what we love. Whatever your heart clings to and confides in, that is really your God. Whatever you and I heart clings to, confide in. So when you're going through stuff, who do you confide in? If you find yourself running to a human being more than you run to God, that human being just replaced God. I'm going to break this thing down into the simplest form. And for you, some of us that think that we're above this, you might want to check yourself because I guarantee you the Holy Spirit will find something in you that you need to say, God, forgive me for because ain't nobody, including the one with the microphone, above this. I promise you that. This is soul searching stuff right here. Yeah, this is soul searching stuff right here. My God, this ain't no prophetic word. This is truth in this Bible. Look at your neighbor and say, lifestyle still matters. And so, my God, whatever you cling to, that is interfering with your commitment to God. And the Bible says that God is a jealous God. He's not going to share his glory. He's not going to be intimate with no other thing. He ain't going to let you be more intimate with that than him. That makes God jealous. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. So whatever your heart clings to and confides in, that is really your God. Ask yourself, my God, what is my heart really clinging to? When I leave here, what am I going to do? Do you ever take time to read God's word after you leave church? How much do you ever cling to prayer? Do you ever pick up that phone and call that accountability partner when you know you're finna do something that you should not do? See, my God, when grace has empowered a life, when grace has really hit a life, my God, it, it, it will convict you. It will make you think about, my God, righteousness over unrighteousness. Grace will tell you, don't you do that. You driving all the way from North Tulsa to South Tulsa to, to go be somewhere you're supposed to be. And Grace will tell you, don't you go. You know you won't. You know you're out of order. You should be doing that. You know he don't love. You know she don't care about you. Grace is talking to you while you're driving. But we shun and we harden our God's voice. We harden our, our heart to God's voice. And he know. We know we shouldn't have been doing that stuff. Somebody give God a hand. So let's look at this right here. James likens the human being, Christian, to an adulterer. You know why? Let me make this some context, because he's saying you're committing adultery on God. I'm teaching tonight. It's going to cut. So when you come to church like we heard tonight, but then we go out there and clean the stuff that we know that's displeasing, we just committed adultery. That's why it says you can't, be, you, 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 you can't be friends with the world and try to be friends with God. One of them is going to rule out. Which one is going to win out in your life? Come on, somebody. You, you, can't, you can't have both worlds, baby. Light and darkness don't go together. Righteous and unrighteous don't go together, my God. I promise you, my God, when we follow you, my God, we're going to see which one is really ruling your life. You come to church for an hour, that don't mean God is ruling your life. My God, you can sit here tonight in Bible study. I'm glad you did because I told the Lord, I'm going to make sure it's encouraging, not condemn me, my God. But you want to make sure, you want to make sure. Thank you. Oh, oh. yes, Lord. Amen. Come on, give me some volume. You want to make sure, you want to make sure that whatever you're clinging to, it's not interfering with your commitment to God. The Bible says God gave, put us in this world, my God. And so we can worship things, my God. But you got to worship the creator of the things. So, so, so James said, my God, if you got friendship with the world and you got love for God, my God, sooner or later, my God, the world going to win. Let me watch this. Whatever voice is the loudest, that's the voice you go to. Yeah. Right. Whichever that's voice it. is the loudest, that's the voice you go to. So if the world is calling you and God is calling you and the world is calling you and God is calling you, whichever voice is the loudest, that is the voice eventually you're going to submit to. And that's why the Bible said, whichever one you sow into, you shall reap. If you sow into the spirit, you, leave, you reap godliness and peace. If you sow into the flesh, oh my God, you reap corruption and you reap death. And so you got to ask yourself, on the scale of one to ten, how loud is God's voice in your life? Because I promise you the world is coming to drown out and it's happening all over the country, my God. I'm going higher now, church. It's happening all over the country, my God, where the world, my God, is coming to the church because the pool pit has let it in and the people has let it in because we have used grace as a license to be like the world. And God know my heart. Once saved, always saved. I ain't got to live nothing. I ain't got to forgive. I ain't got to do nothing. So the church is full of worldliness. And when they get this type of preaching, he preached too hard. I don't want to sit. Uh, one of my brothers told me, my God, this is not the church to come sit. 
We ain't the friendly church. Come on. We ain't doing the jump and the shout. There's conviction going on over here. Conviction. Tra- conviction transform you. Conviction make you want to live right. Conviction make you want to love right. We ain't just doing a whole bunch of jumping and shouting and all that, baby. Oh, God is dealing with our soul. God is cleaning up our conduct. God is cleaning up our lifestyle and going over to church, baby. The devil is alive. I don't want no 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians church. It was, had a lot of gifts, but it was worldly, carnal, fleshly. I always gossiping and bite biting and lying and, and sexual sin running rapid in the church. We ain't 1 Corinthians and say, I don't want that type of church. And so therefore, if you remove, my God, conviction, my God, up out of the church from the pulpit, the people going to think that I'm okay when they ain't okay. The Bible says don't be double-minded. That means double-souled. You got two souls. So you don't want to be double-souled. Let me give you this right. Loyalty. Loyalty. Loyalty is identified by the decisions we make, not merely by the words we speak. Loyalty, oh my God, is identified by the decisions we make, not merely the words that we speak. He said they worship me with their mouth, but their heart is far from me. You say you love me, and if you love me, he said, Jesus said, obey me. If you, if, key word, my woman of God is if. He emphasized that in the scripture. If, why would he put if? Because God knows everybody ain't going to love him. If you love me, your if, my God, is going to shift, and it's going to make you want to obey. Whatever you loyal to, you pursue. Whatever you loyal to, you pursue. So if you love me, if you Lord to me, you will seek me. He says, seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be open. Ask and you shall receive. So what is your soul panting after of? What is your soul, mind, will, and emotion panting after of tonight? Mm. See, because we got too much stuff. I can get stuck here. We got too much stuff from the world interfering with our commitment to Christ. We are more intimate with the world than we are with the God who created the world. We worship the things that God gave us to enjoy over the one who created the stuff for us to enjoy. James said, man, you're committing adultery. Even in the Old Testament, that's New Testament, even in the Old Testament, my God, they committed adultery. Anytime you worship idols more than you worship God, that's considered adultery. Anything that you put before God and do more of is considered adultery. Also, anything that you exalt, look at me, y'all, anything that you exalt above the knowledge of God is considered an idol. We all got idols, cars, it could be weave, it could be nails, it could be suits, it could be <laughs> all of those type of stuff. I'm making it simplistic because I know we got three levels of people inside the church. That's why I want to make sure those, my God, who, who may not be struggling with any form of sexual sin, check your idols, though. Yeah. You might not be smoking weed, watch your idols, though. Yeah. You might not be struggling with, 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 with something, my God, how much do you spend time with God, though? I'm not talking about coming to church. I'm not talking about driving down the street, talking about, God, thank you for waking me up today. God, that ain't nothing, my God. Unbelievers do that. My God, I'm talking about spending time where you got a, you got a lot, a set time lot, where you go two, three hours, my God, an hour and a half, two hours with God, which is you and God. Your phone ain't ringing, you ain't on Facebook, or none of it, just you and God. Who, my God, because you love to be in his presence, my God. You long to spend time with God. You long to get to that sweet spot with God. Come on, somebody. I ain't talking about that old fleshly out of court stuff. I'm talking about when you get to the holies, the holies, when you come up out of there, you're crying, you're weeping, and saying, Lord, thank you for your mercy. Lord, thank you for your grace. <laughs> oh, my God, I didn't deserve it, my God. It didn't have to turn out like that. I'm talking about some real intimacy with God. I ain't talking about that old patty cake stuff, my God. You got to get in God. Grace, my God, empowers you, my God, to get into God's presence. Don't you know this? Write this down, everybody. The only thing that will change you is the presence of God. A lot of emotionalism will not change you. Hype, jumping around, running around the tongues, all that, that don't change you. The presence of the Lord has to hit your life. And when you hit the presence of the Lord, it'll be like the burning bush. Take your shoes off. You're in the presence of a holy God. Paul, in the Acts, on, on his way to the road to the Max, the book of Acts, he had an encounter with God. He had an encounter here. He, he was in the presence of the true and living God. That's why he said, Lord, Lord. At this time, he didn't know who God was, Lord. But Paul knew that he had met somebody that was stronger than him. Because at this time, he was the most feared man in the country when he was Saul. But he met somebody on his way to, to crucify Christian, and he, got, he fell off the horse and he said, Lord. 
capital L-O-R-D. Saul knew that I had met somebody that's more powerful than I am. Can I help you tonight? The presence of the Lord is way more powerful than your hangups and your habits. There is no addiction that you can't overcome. There is no mental, my God, confusion that you can't be delivered from. There is no, my God, emotional wounds that God cannot heal you from. There is no sickness or disease that God cannot heal. The Bible says you are healed by his stripes, my God. I want you to know something, my God. The grace and the blood of God is more powerful than anything that you would ever encounter in life. Oh, my God, you can't tell me God ain't got the power to transform your life. The devil is a lie. If you're sick, it's because you want to be sick. If you ain't changed, it's because you don't want to change, my God. But the more you spend time in God's presence, the more stronger you get. The more confident you get, the more bolder you get. Oh my God, your self-image, your self-esteem, that shame is rolled away. That condemnation is rolled away, my God. Who you begin to accept who God say you is. You be telling yourself, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. Greater is he that lives on the inside of me than he that's in the world. See, you get that for spending time with God. You can't get that on the outer court. You can't get that spending two minutes with God. You can't get that listening to everybody on the TV, turn the TV off and quit letting them preach to you and get the presence of the Lord let God preach to you. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there, man. Hey! Lifestyle still matters. Loyalty. Loyalty. Where your loyalty at? Watch this. Actions are a high level of communication. Your actions speak. Actions are a high level of communication. Do less talking and more walking. Do less quoting scripture and more living scripture. Action is another way. Actions is another way of communication. Your life speaks. Your life communicates matter. At this day and time as a Christian, let me help y'all, your actions uh, communicate more than your words. People want to see what you live at this day and time because you know what? There's so much hypocrisy and worldliness in the church. Oh my God, that's why the Bible says, this is why you got to know things by the Spirit. Because the Bible says the gifts and callings is without repentance. I got some partners right now that was running hard for God. I could bring them into this church right now. They, some of them may be watching, and they in full-blown sin. And some of them know who I'm talking about because I was just with one of them the other day at the football game. And they, I put him on his pulpit, and you're swapping down. This man is the most anointed man in the world because he gifted. Yeah. You got to be able to discern what's gifts and what's anointed. Make it plain. Come on now. Come on now. And you know one of the ways that you discern it? Look at a person's track record. Look at a person's lifestyle. Anybody get up and preach and teach and sing and all that? Come on, somebody. But the lifestyle going to show sooner or later. See, we following things, but we ain't paying attention to the lifestyle because we too mesmerized and caught up on, the, on all the intelligent words that I don't use. All the big words that I don't know. So we caught up in that. We mesmerize on words, but we don't pay attention to people's lifestyle. See what y'all say? In the kingdom, God looks at your lifestyle. He look at how you treat people. He, he look at what you do when you leave 205 South Sheridan tonight. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So actions speak louder and communicate louder. Watch this, 1 John 5 and, uh, I mean, 3 and 21, write that down. Dear children, keep away from anything that might take God's place in your hearts. Anything. Take that back, 5 and 21. Dear children, stay away. Look how the Bible is warning you and I to stay away. Oh, my God, from anything, anything. Stay away. Stay away. Dear children, keep away from anything that might take God's place in your heart. Oh, my God, who's sitting on the throne of your thought life right now? Who really has your affections? How, mm, how, how much in love are you really with God? Have, have your love for God moved past this right here? Look at me, y'all. Have, have your love for God moved past this right here sitting in church? Have your love for God moved past you coming to the altar, my God, but you ain't having an altar time with God, though? Have your love for God. What is interfering? Belief system. Self-image. Unforgiveness towards yourself. Shame, guilt. These things, my God, will, 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 will render the word of God none of ineffective in your life because you got to accept what God is saying about you. Right. See, I had to get to the point where I accepted that I wasn't my former person that I used to be. Mm -hmm. 
And see what I'm trying to say? And the more you disassociate yourself from your first self, your old self, the more you start feeling like, okay, I can do this. Yeah. Long as you keep wrestling with your old self, long as you keep seeing the actions of the old self, <laughs> long as you look in the mirror and you see yourself, my God, as the old person, not the new person, you're going to continue the war. Right. Some of our biggest battles is within ourselves. You got to begin to see yourself as God. You got to see yourself, my God, I mean, the way God see you. And you got to see yourself as little G's. You high priest. You're fearfully one of you made. You're kings and queens. See, you hear them words, but you need to go do a word study on being a queen. They carry themselves in a certain way. A king handles his business, my God. The king governs his affairs right, my God. The king, my God, is blessed, my God, going in and coming out. The queen is blessed going in and coming out, my God. The queen ain't finna let anybody in and out of her gates. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there, my God. A true queen, my God, that see herself as a queen, ain't gonna let nobody mishandle her. A true queen ain't gonna let nobody talk to her any kind of way. Oh, my God. A true queen don't need you to buy her no purse. A true queen don't need you to wash her car. A true queen, I right. see, see, you got to begin to see yourself like that. See, many of us is codependent. We codependent. Believe it or not, we codependent. So guess what? If I'm codependent on anything other than God, guess what it is? It's an idol. Yeah. I'm teaching y'all tonight, baby. Anything that you codependent on is an idol. You don't never let your husband or your wife worship you. I tell y'all the time, don't worship me. I'm going to make mistakes. I'm going to do things that may, you may not like. You better worship God. Man will fall. God will never fail. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. And some pastors, I hate to say it because I'm a clergy, so I'm careful. Some pastors need you to worship them. Because they need it because really their self-esteem is messed up and their self-confidence is messed up. Because really a lot of them was bullied and picked on when they was young. And so now they got a little authority. Now they're using it to, in a negative way. Let me say it. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's an underlining. Oh, oh, oh. Needing to be worshipped, my God. You got to trace the root of it. Why, why, why do I need people to always pass the juju? Why do, I, why, do, why do I get offended if somebody don't say juju? It got to be passed and connected to it. See what I'm say? Well, well, you got to ask yourself, why do I, this person have to address me like this? Uh, why do I need this to feel good about myself? Uh, why do I got to have this to feel good about myself? See, you got to look at the underlying root system of why you need all this stuff that you really don't need if you just accept who God say you is. Come on now. Oh, my God, I'm telling you, God is cutting out. Somebody's going over. Somebody give God some praise in the church, man. Oh, my God. Mm. Yeah, lifestyle still matters, my God. Mm, mm. Yeah. In these days, many people, my God, in these days that we're living in, uh, many love God's word. They speak of his sovereignty, which means God's supreme power and authority. Many people don't mind when you preach messages about God's supreme authority and power and talk about all the attributes and characteristics of God. When everything is just God, God, God. I don't have to worry about dealing with me, me, me. Right. When, that, when, when the pastor got me focusing only on all God's attributes, yeah. see, that means I go up thinking about him, but I never look internal dealing with me. Uh -huh. Watch this. <laughs> this is heavy, man. But to take lightly, my God, we take lightly his words that call for a godly lifestyle. All throughout the New Testament, I've been doing an in-depth study, my God. Who might go with Paul? I'm going to teach y'all, man. Well, Paul talks about Ephesians, Timothy, Titus, 1 Peter, 2 Peter, my God. God is calling all of us. Paul said in the book of Ephesians, the 5th chapter, verse 1, he said, be imitators of Christ. Imitators. Our lifestyle, my God, should be speaking louder than our words. Are y'all with me so far? And so, therefore, we got to be careful, my God, of dealing with this, my God, stuff as born-again, grace-filled believers where we're still functioning in ungodliness. What am I trying to convey as I move forward? You shouldn't and I should not be functioning. Look at my verb. It's functioning in ungodliness. When grace has given us the power to overcome sin. Right. You see what I'm trying to say? Yes. And so, therefore, the world should not have a stronger hold on you than God. Are y'all listening to me, church? Look, listen to me, listen to me. Lord, the devil is a lie. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. The world should not have a stronger hold on you than God, Christians. The only reason why the world has a stronger hold on you than God, because whatever you feed lives, whatever you don't feed dies. That's it. That's it. So what are you feeding? Yes. Mm -hmm. Talk to me, the church. What are you feeding yeah. tonight? Yeah. What are you feeding? What are you feasting on? What are you focusing on? 
What are you putting in your mind? What are you putting in your spirit? It's not enough to come just hear me preach. It's not enough just to come to church for one hour. That's not going to get it, my God. You will be defeated. And you got grace in you that has saved you. You got grace living in the side of you that has empowered you to overcome everything, my God. But if you don't feed that, my God, you're going to be a weak Christian. And you're going to be a defeated Christian. And you're going to talk Christ, but your life don't match Christ. Up on the point, right, number three down, right three down. You got to take this serious. Let's flip this right quick. The seriousness of this calling that's on our life. The seriousness. Write down Colossians chapter three. Is this helping anybody? Mm, mm, mm. Colossians. Let's look at chapter three, starting in verse five. Paul is talking to the Colossian church. Can I help you understand something? Because some of my sons and daughters in here, this is talking to the church, y'all. Titus is dealing with the church. First Peter is dealing with the church. Second Peter is dealing with the church. First Corinthians, second Corinthians is dealing with the church. All of the Bible in the New Testament, everything ain't dealing with unbelievers. The Bible is talking to you and I. So Paul says to go on home for Christ church. This is what you need to do. Going hard for Christ church. Paul says, put to death the simple earthly things lurking within you. Have nothing to do with sexual immorality. I, don't, I wonder why throughout the New Testament, Paul's writing, the first thing he always lists as sin is sexual sin. It's prevalent everywhere. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Sexual sin, oh my God, is a, a, is, a, is a tormentor. From sexual sin, you get diseases, you feel condemnation. My God, oh my God, you can't, my God, my God, at the men's encounter, my God, one of the brothers said, it's hard for me because he struggles with that mess. My God, he said, sometimes it's hard for me to come into the house of the Lord and lift my hand because I got so much condemnation because I've been falling sexually. Sexual sin just robs you of the joy. It robs you of peace. It robs you, my God. It makes you feel ah, like you've been raped, my God. You know I got to go here. I know pastor going to say something about that. Uh, sexual sin is a bad boy. I'm being like this because I want you to feel this to my single women. Protect yourself. Paul says put to death. Remember what you feed lives, what you don't feed dies. He says put to death, my God, have nothing to do with sexual immorality, impurity, lust, and evil desires. He says don't be greedy. That's sin when you lust after stuff. You know what greed is? You know the spirit that puts greed, Sharon, your pastor's teaching you. It's lust. I'm greedy because I want something that I cannot have. You know why we're in debt? Because we lusted after something and we used in people's credit card because your name was on it, but you couldn't pay them. Did I teach y'all just because your name is on it, that ain't your money. That's those people's yeah. money. And yeah. if you can't give it back to them, you shouldn't be using it. Yeah. Yeah. See, 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 see. You know, why? you know why our credit cards are charged up? Because we have no self-control. Mm -hmm. That card got large people's on it. $10,000 limit. So if I can't pay that 10000 back, if I, can't, if I order a purse or a shoe or whatever, and I can't give them people their money, my God, I just stole from them. So in the book of Ephesians, the fifth chapter, he says, steal no more. Right. <laughs> Boy, this is a cold-blooded teaching right here, my God. Yeah. Oh, my God, because we always steal it. If you have went out and used the people money and you ain't paying them back, and you're trying to do this and that to avoid it, you are stealing and robbing. That's sin. God, forgive us for our sins. God, have a mercy on us. Yeah. Amen. See, somebody going to get real tonight. Some of y'all going to get up out the flesh and follow me in the spirit. So if you're greedy, you say, okay, why am I so greedy? Why do I covet everything? Why everything I see, I want? Why come stuff I see on TV, I got to have? It's the spirit of lust driving the spirit of greed. That's the root system. He says, for a greedy person is an idolater. I, I. That means because if you're greedy, that means you got a lot of idols in your life. Greed, lust for more money, yeah. lust for more things. That's how you see them picture on hoarders. Mm -hmm. yeah. See, try to say it's a spirit driving it. Mm -hmm. And then, like my God, like Pastor Dean was talking at the encounter, when you begin to come in and do that, that, that taking stuff away, how they have mental breakdown. Please don't take that. Yeah. It got so much emotions attached to the stuff. And if you go to remove it, people will literally try to kill you. Yeah. If you remove three cups, uh, 
pots. These three pots are two lamps or whatever. They are, they are, oh my God. They are, look, look at that. Look at the love. I'm being serious, y'all. Look at the love a person would have for material stuff. And Lily would have a nervous breakdown if you go off and then touch it. I take it. They love is so attached. They, they, that's a mental problem. They're so attached to that very thing. And they just constantly get more and more and more and more and more. And if you touch it, my God, they, they'll lose their mind. Yeah. If y'all watch that show, they get they, uh, yeah, that's a bad place to be in. And the Bible says in Colossians, Paul talking to the Christians, if you're greedy, you're an idol worshiper. God hates idols. Read the Bible. Your stuff don't be preached. God hates people that worship idols. I ain't saying God hates you. He hates the things that you're worshiping. Right. So anything that you put before God is interfering with your intimacy. Yeah, you're supposed to look good. I look good. You're supposed to dress good. I dress good. You're supposed to ride good. I ride good. I'm not telling you to be broke. I'm telling you to stay in love with God, though. It wasn't ready for it. It wasn't ready for it. Let me go ahead because I can get the time. It says you need, it says, uh, it says because of these sins, the anger of God is coming. Uh-oh. The sins I just talked about, greed, sexual immorality, impurity. Impurity, my God. John Bavir taught me impurity has to do with pornography, lustful thinking, and all that other stuff. That got to be careful because he babies in her. That's impurity. You know the things we do grown folks? Yeah. If I ain't got a man, I'll grab that over there. Come on, y'all. Come on. Yeah. That's, 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 that, that, that's impurity. Christians, Paul says, stay away from that stuff, Christians. If you fall in love with God, he'll take care of that. If you quit feeding that, it won't be so strong. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Oh, my God. And so he goes on to say, he goes on to say, he said, he said the coming, ooh, thank you, Holy Ghost, I love y'all. When we, when we practice this stuff, listen to me, y'all, when we practice doing this stuff that I just talked about, the Bible says it invites the anger. Yeah. Uh, another translation means the wrath of God. Yeah. It's displeasing to God when God has empowered you and I with grace to overcome this stuff. He died so that you and I can be free. He came to redeem mankind back from a sinful lifestyle. He purchased us with his blood. And so when we allow ourselves to be dominated by this stuff, my God, it grieves God. That's why the Bible says don't let your spirit be, don't grieve God's spirit. Are you with me so far? And then, see, some of us, my God, wonder why things don't seem like you get no better. Because you invite. God can't bless that mess, church. There's a level of wrath. People preach that one side of God's grace, God is love, all that. But the Bible says it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. The Bible says that he is a consuming fire. Come on, somebody, my God. Like God, ain't, you don't want to be handed over to a reprobate mind, baby. You don't want God to take his hands off of you. And you don't want God to put his hands on you in a negative way, baby. Oh, my God, God know how to break it down. God will strip you down till you ain't got nothing. You'll be over there in the hotel talking about, can I have a place to stay? Can I come get a free coat? Don't get full of yourself and think, you can be up today and down tomorrow, baby. You better ask somebody. You can be doing good today and be, hey, hey, my God. You better watch yourself because you can be up today and down tomorrow in a minute. Life can take a turn in a minute, baby. Mm -hmm. So advice to wrath to God. Watch this. Says, he says you used to, he said you used to do these things when your life was still a part of this world. But now the time is to get rid of anger, rage, malicious behavior, slander, dirty language. It cuss all the time. Don't lie to each other, for you have stripped off your old sinful nature and all its wicked deeds. Put your new nature, put on the new nature and be renewed as you learn to know the creator and become like him. Christians, Paul is telling us this type of stuff is what we used to do. This type of behavior should not be associated with us today. Right. Now, I'm going to pick you up before I close. I personally can understand when someone freshly comes off the streets. Streets, I'm not talking about gang life and all that. Stay with me. Somebody that's unsaved, thank you, Holy Ghost, come into a church setting like this, and they give their life to Christ, and they fresh. They don't know nothing. You know what I'm trying to say? They got simple lifestyles going on. They just come out the world and whatever. They just somebody invited them going for Christ church and, and now they heard something and now they want to come get elected to Christ. Amen. I can respect yeah. that person. Yeah. I'm finna go out there on a limb. But for some of y'all that's been with me four or five, six years and your life don't look no different than the person that just came off the streets, I and God, God first and I got a problem with that. Yeah. 
if the people that's been walking with me for any length of time is causing all the hell in the church, that's a problem. If the people, my God, has been sitting up under me for three months, at least three months, there's something in your life that's okay. I got to do better than what I'm doing. I, 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 I'm way low suffering for somebody who don't know. I have very low tolerance for people who say they were Christians, but they don't look like it, act like it, nor talk like it. That's not judging it. You, mm, that's not judging it, but you should be farther alone. You should be much further. You should be struggling with the elementary truths of the Bible. You shouldn't be struggling with the same sins that somebody that's been in the world for 25 years that just come into the church and got saved and you struggling with the same thing they struggling with. That is a problem. You can't tell me that. But see, they don't preach this stuff across the pulpits. But it's the truth. There should be a difference between a saved and an unsaved person. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says that I am a New creation. That means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become new, a new person. The old life is gone and the new life has begun. Your character will be affected when you spend time with Jesus in that secret place. What am I trying to say? You can't spend time. Y'all look at me because I got a lot of young babies off in here. I'm not talking about kids. I'm talking about children in their faith. You can't spend time with God for any length of time and God not start working on your character. When you open up your Bible to my young children in favor, even to the older people who think this don't apply to them, the devil is a lie. When you spend, that's why I'm always pushing y'all to read your Bible. Because the more you have contact with God's word, the more, the more it chisels, yeah. the more it washes, yeah. the more it cleanses. The Bible says in the book of John, my God, when you read the word, the word of God washes you. You can read the word every day. Well, Pastor, I don't understand the word. Just keep reading. Say, God, give me wisdom. Give me knowledge. Give me understanding. I don't know everything about the Bible. See what I'm trying to say? God ain't going to give it to you all at once. You got to just keep reading. And then when you don't understand something, when you come to church, ask somebody. Get one of these women up here. Get one of these men up here that's been in this thing for quite some time. My God. And say, hey, I was reading this. What do this mean? Can you explain this to me? How bad do you want it, baby? How bad do you want to know? How bad do you want to be transformed? How bad do you want to be effective? How bad do you want to be a better mom, a better father, a better husband, a better wife? What, what, is you, what price are you willing to pay? What cost are you willing to go through, my God, to be better in your life? Mm. Look at your name and say, lifestyle still matters. We're jumping shout Sunday. I got to give y'all this right here, though. So you're a new creation. Don't follow after the first Adam. The first Adam sinned. Jesus considered the second Adam. According to uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, you and I are the second Adams. Who are you patterning your life out of? Do you know that it's mockery to you and to God when we know that we saved, but our life looked like the first Adam? It don't look like the second Adam? What Paul is telling you to put to death and then he tells you in that same chapter, my God, to put on, put the death this, but put on this, change clothes. The first Adam was dirty. The new Adam is clean. Yeah. Change clothes. Put on love, mercy, kindness, goodness, purity. Not impurity, purity. See, you're changing clothes. It's time for us to undress so we can redress. It's time for us to uncover so we can recover. Yeah. Come on, somebody. It's time to undress so we can redress. It's time to change clothes in the church. The church as a whole around the world, pastor, need to change clothes. We still got on them filthy clothes. We still pattern our life after the first Adam, even though the first Adam is dead. Why are you trying to keep alive something that should be dead? Put to death these things. Lifestyle still matters. Let's give God a hand. I'm going to close it. You know, before I give you these last two, and I'm going to get out of here, I want to, God dropped this on me because we need to understand. I'm actor. I'm out there because, see, the type of stuff that God gives. And I was talking to one of my brothers, man. He said, what I know about this church, and I'm paraphrasing. If you want to change, exact words that he told me. If you want to change, if you want to get better, if you want to know what your purpose is, you want to overcome this, this, and that, this is where you want to be. He said, we, his exact words were, we are not the happy church. We're not, uh, we're not the happy church. But everything is just so exciting. Don't you know, let me tell you something. I, this is another weapon that the enemy are using. Man, listen to me, Christian. This is another weapon at this day and time. Because you got to understand, I'm not just talking to people in Tulsa. I communicate with people all over the country. 
And here's another weapon that the devil is using to betwixt Christians. A charged up atmosphere. And they swap it down to the anointing. I ain't talking about no one church. I'm just telling you. Atmosphere can be deceptive. And we are not alive enough because we got so much of the sin that God, that Paul tells us to put to death. So it's interfering with God's voice. It's interfering with God's spirit. Don't you know sins interferes with the spirit of God operating in your life? The reason why we can't overcome, the Bible says we are more than conquerors. You conquer stuff that we just read about through the spirit, not through the flesh. You are more. The Bible says you are more than a conqueror. You got to accept that. So that stuff, my God, that you know you shouldn't be doing, why are you doing it? Yeah. It's hard. It's hard because you're trying to do it in the flesh and you don't spend enough time with God. Oh, I don't want to come. Yeah. Write this down. Write this down. Write this down. Let me give y'all this. Oh, my God. The other side of grace will cause you to live righteously. Put that up there. Righteously. When grace has hit your life, it will give you a desire to want to live righteously. Even though you and I, I and you stumble, I said even though you and I, I and you stumble, when grace has operated in your life, you would, have, you would strive to live righteous. Even though you fall, you'll get back up. Even though you make a mistake, you'll get back up. Even though you cuss somebody out, you say, God, forgive me, and get right back in the race. Even though you do something you shouldn't be doing, look at something you should, whatever it is that you do, you will be able to say, okay, God, I met your own it. Quit deflecting responsibility. Mm. So watch this. Grace will cause you to do this right here. Write down our fellow man. Grace will cause you to whew, love your fellow man. I'm going to read Romans, and I'm going to close it. When I get through with this, I'm going to let you out of here. Just look at this. This is the church. Oh, the sound of flipping them pages. Show sure sound good. Romans chapter 12, 17 to 21. I'm going to read a little bit of it. It says, never pay back evil with more evil, y'all. We're talking about horizontal now. Come down out of the heavens and let's go right here to your sister and brother sitting in front of you and behind you. Let's make it personal. Never pay back evil with evil, with more evil. Do things in such a way that everyone can see you are honorable. Do all that you can to live in peace with everyone. Dear friends, never take revenge. Leave that to the righteous anger of God. For the scriptures say, I will take revenge. I will pay them back, says the Lord. Instead, if your enemies are hungry, he says, feed them. Grace will call you to function like that. Grace will keep you from rendering evil for evil. Grace will tell you, you know what, I know she stole it, and I got on camera seeing that she stole it, but I'm still going to give her something to eat because she's hungry. Yeah. See, that's what grace will do. See, grace, grace, listen to me, grace empowers you, enables you and I to do what, we, what our flesh don't want to do. See what I say? Grace will cause you to treat your fellow sister or brother right. I just read it to you. Write the second thing down because time is at hand. Grace will deal with our methods. Let's look at Matthew 22, 30, 39. Thank you, Holy Ghost. 22. I want to read it. 2239. It says, your method. It says, a second is equally important. Talking about, you know, the first is the greatest commandment. The second is equally important to love your neighbor as yourself. Method. Do you really love your brother and sister? You can't tell me we love our brother and sister when we see them stumble and we put it all on Facebook. Or we see them stumbling and we find somebody in the church to talk about them. See, God looks at all that type of stuff. Or right, let me go a little deeper. When you know one of your sisters and brothers is struggling and you don't reach out. But when somebody come up to you and tell you that she or he don't go to church no more, you're like, yeah, I know that. Like you don't even care. Now, I must be balanced this out because I know that people will come in seasons. I will literally drive myself crazy trying to keep up with the amount of people that comes in this church and that's, um, that's committed to this church. Some people, they season is up. And my father told me you got to be able to let them go when it's time to go. 
That's just what it is. But this is where you got to be sensitive with sin when the fear because some people, their time may be up on your life, but you're holding on to them longer than you should. See, sin blocks that. You know why we hold on to them? Because we codependent. That's an idol. We codependent on them. Some of us, we feel like we need that person and we can't exist and we can't function without him or her in our life. That's an idol. So if you felt like you can't function without another human being being in your life, why you don't feel like that by God? You see how your, your loyalty is divided. I, need, I can't make it without Sharon. I can't make it without my wife. But then yet, I don't feel like that about God who created me and my wife. I will make sure she got everything, but then I won't give God nothing that belongs to him. I have gotten in the habit of coming to the house of the Lord, and I don't give God none of this 10%. I don't give God no seed. I don't want to give nobody no love. I don't want to apologize to nobody even when I know I got a nasty attitude. Come on, come. This is stuff that cleans up our life that the Spirit of God is talking about that most people won't talk about. And I, I thank God that, I'm, that, that the grace of God has empowered me to be able to step out of her and talk about this stuff because yeah. you never hear it. You don't hear much of, Y'all watch all kind of t- televangelists. Y'all don't hear them talk about stuff like this that have to do with your life and clean up your life. Everything is motivational. Everything is about the sovereignty of God. Ain't, ain't nobody talking about how our life affects people. It keeps people coming in or it keeps people going out. Yeah. How ungodly lifestyle interferes, my God, with the testimony of God. See what I say? You don't hear that type of stuff being talked about and preached from the pulpit. I'm sorry. But I'm just one of the ones that would talk about it. So the Bible says, love thy neighbor as thyself. Grace will cause you to love your neighbor. The second greatest commandment is to love your neighbor. Whatever condition she or he's in, you still love him. No matter how many mistakes they make, you still love them. You don't allow nobody to mishandle you and take advantage of you, but you love them. That's, right. That's the heart of God. That's the method. Let me give you this last one. Look at our motive. Matthew 5, 5 right? right? Matthew 5, 16 down. Chapter 5, verse 16. Come on, Holy Ghost. 16. It says, uh, in the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see, so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. Motive, good deeds. What that does not mean is that everything I do, I'd be like, Sharon, look at me. Look what I'm doing. I gave Chris the file out. Look what I did. You know, oh, I, I, come, would, you, would you come over here? I'm, I'm going to pray for her, and I want you to take this and put this on Facebook that I'm praying for her. <laughs> yeah. Motive. Yeah. See, I try to make stuff plain. Yeah. And one of the highlights, giving God the glory that many of y'all, my God, and people that be watching on screen, online, tells me they love how I can take the word and make it applicable and make it bring, come down to the simplest form. People would do that. Let your good deeds, that means your lifestyle. It's not talking about boasting about the things you do for people. See, we take stuff out of context. Your good deeds is mean the way you live. Right. Let that speak volumes to people. How you live your life. That's Jesus talking about that. My God, in the book of Matthew. And let's look at reputation. Proverbs 21, 2. Write this word down. Proverbs 22, 1. What does it say? Choose a good reputation over great riches. Being held in high esteem is better than silver and gold. Good reputation. Good reputation. God compares your reputation to money. King Solomon say, choose, Proverbs 21, a good reputation. Y'all look at me. Choose a good reputation. Your reputation matters as professing Christians. Take it off the Christian. You as a human being, your reputation matters. Your reputation is you. Wherever you go, you cannot live your reputation. There are certain things you can live down but you can't live down the wrong reputation. Reputation will follow you everywhere you go and come from which city you go to. You can go to Maine. Eventually, if somebody know that you're in Maine, they'll be like, yeah, watch them. Yeah, watch them. Your reputation will follow you everywhere you go. At this day and time, thank you, Christian. At this day and time, with social media, oh, my God. Social media, my God, uh, that has been a blessing and a curse all at the same time. You got to choose a good reputation. Your reputation matters, man. The reputation of the church matters. The reputation of the people that goes to the church matters. 
me and Christian, Christian took me out to eat, uh, when was that, uh, Monday, and we was, uh, we was uh, coming out the mall, I had to go get a watch put in my battery, and the man of God wore his, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, battery put in my watch, and the man of God wore his going off for Christ church. The man of God had on his going hall for Christ shirt. He said, let me put this on. He was telling me so I could represent. Well, we walk out the mall. There's two ladies sitting on the, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the bench. Going hall for Christ church. Yeah, I heard about that church. Yeah, I heard y'all doing some good things over at that church. Did she not say that? That's always encouraging. But then you got those that would say, yeah, go on for Christ church, but then they'll go spread a rumor about something they heard that was a lie. That's right. Because somebody didn't like something the way it went, and you're trying to say, now they're going over there and lie on us. Mm -hmm. You got that too. That's why the Bible says stop lying. Mm -hmm. Book of Ephesians, quit telling lies. So, so, so when you go propagate something, when you go tell something that you don't know if it's truth, you're just lying. You're spreading lies. And the Bible says God hates a liar. See, this stuff cleans up our lives, church. That's all pastor's trying to do. Lifestyle still matters. Why? Because, my God, Christianity has been so misrepresented, and God needs some ambassadors. That's what you and I are, to represent Christ. Christ needs to be represented to the world. The pool pit, woman of God, needs to represent Christ. People need to quit preaching the one side of grace and start preaching the totality of grace. Grace is the power you and I have to overcome different things, hang ups and habits. You and I don't have to be defeated. That's all I'm trying to say. And also, too, let your lifestyle speak louder than your words. My God, you are created in God's image. My God, you are empowered to overcome, my God, the lust of the flesh and the pride of life and the lust, the lust of the eyes. My God, God has gifted you with greatness. God has gifted you with talent. Who, my God, who, my God, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. God loves you. Don't you know that God died for you? God came all the way out of heaven, my God, to be crucified and beaten and disfigured so that you and I can be free today. God did all that for you and I. See, if you don't believe that, then you'll take that for granted. He came all the way from heaven and walked down in this sinful world to be beaten, disfigured, mishandled, lied on, spit on, and all of that for you and I. That should increase your love for God. That's why you got to accept what God says you are. It ain't what your mama, your grandma said, or your ex-boyfriend, or whoever you live with now. My God, believe what God says about you. So don't let grace, my God, operate from a negative side in your life, because grace is not negative. Only time grace would not show up in your life is when you focus after the first item, is all I'm trying to say. And then you got to allow God to move you to the second item, where grace empowers you to overcome. Ain't no cigarette demon too hard. It ain't too hard. I smoked cigarettes for 10 years. 97, been delivered a tiny, ain't had to try to go back. God has the power. But I guarantee you, y'all, if I quit feeding my spirit, if I quit flipping them pages, if I quit standing in this present shape, the very thing that's, that, that's up under my foot now, right. I'll be back on top of me in a matter of months. It will reverse that quick. Yeah. God will allow it to do that because he said you're too valuable. If I allow you to stay out here and sin, Juju, you're you going to hurt Thousands on top of thousands of people. So God will intervene. That's what God is trying to do in a lot of y'all lives right now. Intervene. That's why things that you think should be going right ain't going right. He's trying to get your attention. He's trying to wake you up, old sleeper. He's trying to awaken your conscience to him. He's saying, clip that. Quit, putting, quit, quit put, uh, uh, having a, quit, commit, committing adultery with the world. Love me more than you love the world. The world didn't know but hurt you and I, y'all. The world didn't know hurt you and I. I know this was a different flow tonight, even for those that's looking online. And this is a, a tough series to do. And I'm going to do some more of it next week if the Lord delay is coming. It's tough because it matters. Amen. It matters. Don't you know your greatest influence is amongst the people that you once ran the streets with and did things with? Your neighbors, your co-workers. Let your communication be in your lifestyle, not your words. There's people waiting on your lifestyle to line up so they can come to the king. Don't let your lifestyle keep somebody out of the kingdom. Don't let your, don't let our, thank you, Holy Ghost, don't let our negative attitudes. Don't render evil for evil. Don't function like the world function, Christians. Be different. The Bible says be sanctified, be set apart, meet for the master's use. Keep yourself available. Keep your clothes spiritually clean. 
so you can be used to be effective for God. Let God use your hands. Let God use your mouth. Let God use your eyes. Oh, my God, let your words, my God, uplift and not tear down, church. My God, become more positive. The reason why we're so negative because we're negative in our mind. You can't spend time with God, my God, and continue to be negative. God will break all this stuff off of you. Spend time with God. Some of us, like the Spirit of God said in Colossians, we angry. Some of you women is more angry than me and I. Angry. You angry at life. God wants that. You angry at, at mama. God wants that. You angry at daddy from abandonment. God wants that. You angry how your children do you and treat you. Why God? God wants that. God wants to heal you so that you can be effective. God don't want you to stay sick. God don't want you to stay bound up, my God, to the things that he delivered you and I from. He wants that stuff, but you got to be willing to release. You got to be willing to give him your pain. You got to be willing to give him your frustration. You got to be willing to let that stuff go because it's, it's rendering you in, as Christians ineffective and unproductive, Peter said. The knowledge that we gather of God should be producing effect, effectiveness. It should be rendering us ineffective. Peter said, I would not have you ineffective and unproductive with the knowledge that you have of God. Right. All the knowledge that you got right now. How is it benefiting the kingdom? You know why it's ineffective? Because we're not applying it in our life. That's all I'm trying to say. Look at your neighbors. We close and say lifestyle still matters. Many of you told me, my God, you can go ahead and close your book. Many of you told me and, and some of me messaged the stuff and said, I thank you for your eternal yes. Thank you for your yes. Without your yes, ain't no telling where I'll be and so forth and whatnot, my God, okay? I thank God for that. Thank you for all the gifts. Thank you for all the kind words. Uh, now let your yes be eternal like mine. Yeah, that's let your yes be eternal like mine, eternal yes. Because I understand that I can't do it without him, daughter. I got to have God. I can't make it without God. And that's why I'm misunderstood because my passion is so real. My commitment is so real. I got a call all the way from Kansas today after that about you, woman of God. The woman was ranting and raving. Who? how God used you to shake that place up to us. He said, my God, Pastor Juju, whatever you're doing down there in Tulsa, my God, keep doing it. Because Miss Antoinette came down here and got, came down to her. And I give God the glory. Let's give God a hand for that, man. Taking the gospel all the way down to Kansas, doing a women's encounter. And went down there and blessed her. The woman of God said, I had to call you and tell you. She lit a fire down her. She said, whatever you're doing at going home for Christ Church in Tulsa, keep doing it, Juju. I'm proud of you, man. And I give God the glory for that because she's an extension of me and what we do here. Called Matthew 28, 19, go ye into the world and make disciples. But I wonder if she go down there and preach like that, and I get that phone call from Sister Ebony. But after that, ain't the person that Ebony thought she was. Even though she went down there and God used her, she preached. People repented. They came face to face. She taught on the Spirit, baptism, the Holy Spirit. What if she went down there and God really used her? But in my mind, when I got the phone call, I'm like, what you seen ain't what it is, though. Preach good, teach good, but a lifestyle is raggedy. But see, that's not the case. That is not the case. That goes back to reputation. Reputation matter. Pride will say, I don't care what they think about me. They just hate me. The devil is a lie. They call it an apple, an apple, and an orange, an orange. Some stuff we bring on ourselves because we haven't put to death the things that God said we should put to death. Lifestyle still matters. Stand to your feet. Thank you for allowing me the time, but I want to help you. The Spirit of God wants to help you. Can I get the whole church, everybody, to come down? Everybody. Everybody that's left in the circle, just come down. Because we're a family. And we all got stuff that we need help with. Just come on down. If you want to kneel, you can. But other than that, I'm just going to pray. Just come on down. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you. Just come on down. Y'all come on down to squeeze it. I want everybody as much as they can. I don't want nobody in the aisles that we can get in here. Yes, Lord. Keep the music low. I just want to minister just a little bit to you and encourage you. Come on down. Come on. Come on, man of God. Yes, Lord. You know, a pastor really didn't care about you. I remember I made mention to some of the staff that maybe I'll just start preaching some happy messages. If that's what God gave me, just happy stuff. And 
and don't tell you you need to love somebody, don't tell you you need to forgive. And, but then many told me that they wouldn't stay. If I start preaching the happy messages all the time, which is all of God's grace and all of God's gospel, it's not conviction, it's not, it's not anger, but when it's perceived right and understood right, it's empowering. But there's always a level of conviction connected to true gospel. As the Bishop Noel Jones said, how can we say we preach it what Christ preached, but we never talk about what Christ talked about? And Christ did not like ungodliness. Christ hated religion. Christ said the second greatest commandment is for you and I, I and you to love thy neighbor. Christ said to forgive. Christ said to release. Christ said if your enemy is hungry, feed him. Christ also said, my God, when I was in prison, you didn't come see about me. When I was hungry, you didn't feed me. When I was thirsty, you didn't give me nothing to drink. And the disciples said, when was you in prison? When was you hungry? He said, when you didn't do it to the least of one of these. When you denied them, you denied me. When you thought, when you cut off your arm, they arm, you cut my arm off. The Bible says for us to love what God loved. I need every one of the sons and daughters turn around and look at your neighbor. Turn around and look at your neighbor. Really look at him. Really look at your neighbor. Come on, y'all not looking. Y'all just glancing. Turn around and look at your neighbor. Yeah, see, this stuff makes it we uncomfortable. You know why? Because we speak through text messages. We speak through emails. We talk on, on Facebook, uh, Facebook stuff. But you got to learn how to look at your sister and look at your brother. Guess what? That's your arm. That's your leg. That's your eye. That's your ear. That's your foot. Come on, somebody. You need each other to survive. Come on, uh, Pastor uh, uh, Juanita Biden. We need each other to survive. You need your brother. You need your sister. You have something that your sister and your brother need, church. Lifestyle still matters. Loving Christ still matters. Falling in love with Jesus still matters. Forgiving people still matters. Letting it go still matters. If you had 30 days to live, would you still hold on to the stuff you standing up here with right now? Ask yourself that question. If I had 30 days, Lorenzo, to live, would I still hold on to the person that got the window at the job? Uh, the per- man at the person that got the promotion because you didn't get it. Ask yourself, would well, that stuff really matter if all I had was 30 days to live? If I was dealing with a terminal ill disease, that would I be bitter like I'm bitter? Would I be angry like I'm angry? If it really matters. It don't matter. You got to be willing to let that stuff go because it's dimming you. It's hindering you. It's stopping you from being productive and effective for God. Doesn't really matter. Doesn't really matter. Doesn't really matter. Doesn't really matter. Father, thank you for the people of God. Separate us so that you can promote us, God. Clean us up, Father God. Mm. Clean us up from the inside out, Lord. We desire to be the church that you're coming out there without spot or wrinkle, Father God. Mm. Father God, you're still calling us to a holy life, Lord. You're still calling us to a sanctified, consecrated life, Father God. And we need it, Lord. Father God, forgive us for all of our sins. Forgive us for our mindsets. Forgive us for our motives. Forgive us for the wrong methods, Father God. Forgive us for not caring about our reputation. Forgive us for not caring about the reputation of the kingdom, Father God. We repent, Father God. Forgive us for our attitudes, Father. Wash our minds. Forgive us for being gossipers. Forgive us for judging. Father God, help us to release all of the anger, all of the frustration, and all of our curse. Father God, we cast that stuff on you, Lord. That stress is killing us, Father. Father God, we release right now, Lord. Come on, stretch your hands towards heaven. Amen. I see the tears. That's right. Come on, y'all. Come on. Come on. No time is at hand. But release some of that stuff. Doesn't really matter. You got 30 days. Tomorrow, the Bible says tomorrow is not promised. You don't know if you're going to wake up tomorrow. I don't know if I'm going to wake up tomorrow. You got to be ready to stand before God. Release that stuff. Amen. Amen. Let it go. I see y'all ladies and men. Let it go. Let it go. Father God, empower this body. Strengthen this body. Strengthen this body, God. We love you, Lord. Thank you for giving us a second and third and fourth chance, God. Oh, we accept your forgiveness. We forgive ourselves tonight. 
We release all of the anger, all of the rage, all of the bitterness, all of the, oh my God, the insecurity, all of the low self-esteem. Oh my God, we release it, God. Come on, release y'all. I can't do it for you. You got to talk to God. You got to talk to God. We just got about a few more minutes. Come on, I'm going to let you go. Your life depends on it, my God. Your grandchildren depends on your yes tonight. Oh, my God, your marriage depends on your yes tonight. Come on. Oh, your peace depends on your yes tonight. Surrender. Surrender. Who surrender? Cast all your curve upon God, for he curved for you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I see y'all praying. I see y'all praying. I'm going to release you. Come on, cry out to the Lord. Pastor can't do it for you. I can't do it. I'm trying to work mine out like you're trying to work yours out. Yes, Lord, it's me, God. It's me, God. Help me, God. Strengthen me, God. Touch me, God. Oh, my God. Break every chain. Break every yoke. Destroy all the ah, the mess in my mind. Ooh, Lord, clean up my heart. Clean up my will, Lord. Ooh, break me to submit surrender and submission, Lord. Thank you, 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 Lord. Grab your neighbor's hand as we close now. Come on, touch your neighbor. That's power and agreement. That's power and agreement. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for the privilege. Oh my God, we thank you for the honor that we get to stand. And we get to touch and we get to agree. Let your kingdom fully manifest. Father God, I release these sons and daughters, Father God, into your care tonight. And I pray, Father God, that wherever you take them tonight, that they think about the word that they heard tonight. Whatever we do, we must do all unto the glory of God. So strengthen them. Bless my sister and bless my brother, Lord. Bless their homes, bless their children, bless their grandchildren. Bless all of the businesses, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Strengthen them. Cover, 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 cover them, Lord. Cover them, Lord. We don't have to pump prime and big. We don't have to speak in all type of tongues, God. Cover us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Strengthen us, Lord. We are here. We have showed up tonight. We thank you. We believe. We got faith that you're going to do it. We know you are able, Father God. We release. We trust you. Come on, tell God you trust him. Tell God you trust him. Trust him with your life. Trust him with your future. Trust him with your marriage. Trust him with your pain. Trust him with the stuff you don't know. Trust him with the stuff that you do know. Oh my God. Come and come and trust him with your husband, baby. Trust him, woman of God. Oh my God. He got your husband. He got your husband. Oh my God. Trust him. Trust him. Trust him. Lord, bless the people of God. Come on and say amen. You are released. You are released. You are released.